look at the bubbles. Look at all those air bubbles. Got some leader. I don't think he's quite ready. Whew. That's the two-handed hold. Oh, look at those bubbles. That's uh, that's when you know all of a sudden you got some energy. Look at that fish ran right back. So I had him up to a leader, had him at 10 foot, went right back down the bottom. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's crazy, you can't ever judge the size. You think you got uh, maybe a younger one, and then they burp. You get that first burp and, uh, oh, it's on after that first burp. It's crazy, that's how a lot of people miss them. They, uh, they're used to a smaller battle. Oh, <laughs> gotta go to two hands. They're used to that smaller fish and then uh, they burp and thought they triple in size. You got him right there on the graph. He's coming up, he's uh, at 20. It's like a pretty big fish on the graph. Oof. Gotta go back to the two hand hold. Back to the bottom. Back to the bottom. Oh, he's coming up. Oof. Little, little spin, you gotta keep on that reel. Got to be ready. Look at the size of those air bubbles. This is, that was his uh, third major run, six runs all together. A lot of these fish give you those three real big ones. Oh, got a leader. We're gonna see him here. See what we got. Well, we got a big one. Good looking fish. Good looking fish. Oh! <laughs> Saw the boat. Once they see that boat, you can see him right there. Oh! Love it. Air bubbles are just massive. Coming up. Getting. Getting. That's <laughs> what you get for self netting. Good fish, though. So close, yet so far. Oh, that was one. I grabbed it on the way down, I didn't see it. I'm like, huh, there's no bottom in my jig. Get everything on. I'll tell you what. We're out here jig fishing. We're gonna talk about the situation. Oh, he's coming up, coming up fast. Oh, big fish, look at that fish. Giant lake trout, there's my leader, he's 10 foot away. He's gonna burp and panic, but I might be able to net him. You can see the big bubbles. Heck, Devin, grab the net real quick until he panics. I missed that fish on the first take and uh, you know, a lot of guys kind of throw a fit and almost get to a pouting stage when they miss a bite. But uh, I just kept jigging and this one came right back and right there, he uh, gave me another swing at it. Oh, right there. Literally on the uh, second take. So we're gonna hold him up there, suspended for a second. Actually, let's throw him back in just for one second there, Devin. He's got some spunk on him. So when these fish get real energetic, I'll hold the net. So like that, this fish is gonna have some energy. So as I pull him in the net, we've set him in the boat. And if he's calm, I just set him right down and I go ahead and unhook that fish. This fish has all kinds of energy. So I'm actually gonna leave him in the water. We're using the Eagle Predator net here. It's got a super deep basket. So I can leave him in the water. I can unhook him there and then pull him in. But uh, that fish came in, hit the jig. I completely missed it. Um, got back in and he uh, took it again. So I'm gonna leave him right here in the water. You can see he, uh, he came up way easier than he, uh, than he should have. Right there, all right, jigs out. Now we'll pick him up. Maybe, maybe we'll pick him up. So these fish usually burp and you know, it's a 20, 30 minute run. And this fish here did not burp. And uh, wherever he is, 
this fish gave me quite the battle. Get him out. You can see right there. Whoa. That is what it is all about. Big giant lake trout on the jig, spring fish. Look at the colors on them fins. Guys, it's a simple program. And we're gonna walk you through that program right now. Look at the graph. Look at his brothers and sisters right there. <laughs> we gotta get this one back, get another one. Awesome. Back in the net, set him down, revive him for just a second. And we'll kick him loose and I'll walk you through the program. Set him back, get him revived. Don't even pick him up again. Take him out, get him all free of the net. That fish biting everything. All right, there goes that monster. <laughs> I'll tell you, that right there, when you look like this, when you're wet and they kicked your butt, that's what it's all about. Uh, that was ball. We're going to get another one. And uh, I'll tell you what, jigging Lakers spring when they're on structure like that. There's nothing like it. Big fish. I just had to put the white on him. It's the third time you hit it, I didn't want to tell you. You're wrong. Holy cow. Guys, I've fished lake trout a long time and hands down, that's the biggest run I've ever had. That was, uh, I bet 200 feet of line that fish just took out. I have no idea what I got on here, but it is big and strong. Oh. <laughs> there goes another 30, 40 foot. I'm, uh, I'm literally hundreds of feet out. Hooked this fish on a, on a shallow water hump in 20 foot of water. I actually missed him twice. Um, and this fish literally is probably sitting in a hundred foot of water and out of the side of us. Oh, I mean, this is a big fish. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, gaining some line back. And you gotta be careful. So anytime you have a fish do this, right? So, so this is a perfect example of kind of talk about it and hopefully nothing happened. But when a fish runs that far and runs that deep, obviously you're gonna turn them at some point. Um, we're using extra heavy rods. Um, so that fish took out hundreds of feet of line, dropped down into probably 80, 90 foot to the channel of the side of me. And at some point I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that fish like I did. And that fish is gonna start coming at me. So now he's coming at me. So I hooked him with his head down, my jig head up. Then he ran away from me, pulling that hook that way. Then when he turns and comes at you, the jig head now rolls around a 90 degree. So anytime you get a lot of rotation in the head of those jigs, um, you, you're playing with fire to, to possibly lose a fish. So as that fish turns, when you feel them coming at you and you're gaining those, that headway, you really got to make sure that your hand is on that reel and you are cranking. I mean, getting some drag slip with super line like this, you're not going to get too bad a twist. You'd rather get some, uh, some twist in your line and have some drag slip rather than risk having that fish uh, spit that hook, getting some slack. So that fish, I do not know what I got on, but this fish is going around the clock on me. Holy cow. I don't know if I've ever caught one with this much power. You never know, is he a young spunker or flat out tank? But I'll tell you, that drag is not loose. <laughs> that drag is cut your hand tight. So, oh, he's coming at me. Keep that tension on him. Oh, I don't see him on the graph yet. He keeps switching sides of the boat, so he's going from, you know, port starboard. So, hopefully he doesn't do that when we're trying to net him. My wrist is about shot. But that was his three big runs. We always talk about, we talked about on that last fish, almost all Lakers take a minimum of three big runs. Sometimes they'll take 10, but once you get that third real big one out of them, um, you can almost anticipate a little bit of wear. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like Lakers everywhere. After you get that third big run, you almost can expect some, some sort of that fish coming in. All right, we got him at about 20 foot. 
Devin's gonna set down the camera. Now we got leader. Look at the size of those. Look at the size of that lake trout, boys. <laughs> Switch sides. This is a flat out tank. <laughs> oh cow man, that's uh I got the net. That is a that's a horse of a laker. <laughs> oh man. We let him chill out a little bit. I'm gonna try to get my wrist back. I mean that run, I mean look at that spool. I mean it's full. That run took literally what an eighth of an inch off of that spool. I mean that fish took a run like it was nobody's business. Look at the size of that fish. We're gonna let him chill one more time. I got a big hoop on the side. We talked about it last time, but it's important to talk about. We're not damaging the fish here. So if you have a small net, and if that net is pulling the gills closed on that fish, you're gonna always risk hurting that fish. But if you have a big enough, deep enough hoop like this, five foot, that fish can swim, he can move his gills. We're gonna let him chill out a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna unhook him down there in the water and then pull him up here. Let me grab one thing real quick. All right, let's get him unhooked. Look at that fish. Look at that jig. He doesn't like to be touched that much. Where's the old... Oh, good, got the jig out. All righty. Now let's get the jig out of the way so you can't harm the fish. We're gonna lift this up in the net. A lot of times I grab the tail or the, or the overall gill plate of a fish and lift them into the boat. With a fish this size, I'm not gonna have the strength without damaging that fish. So we're gonna lift them up in the net and then get them up for that photo. Oh, I'm gonna grab the overall net, get that gigantic in here in the boat. And let's take a look at what we got here. That, oh, right there is a lake trout. What do you think about that? You can barely hold them up. That right there is why you come out, study the graphs, pay attention, run the program, because you will get a slob lake trout. That's what it's about right there. I tell you, we're gonna get this old girl back, but that is a tank. I don't even know what that fish weighs. It's big. It's real big. So, so we classify them as big lake trout. We'll get it back. I'm actually set her back in the net and do that same thing. Set her back in the water. We'll get her back. Again, we'll set her in the net. We instead of picking her up and dropping her when she's not ready, we always start from the net. Get her ready. We'll get her going, get her head turned, get her upright, and that right there, super <laughs> That fish is ready to go. Hey, that, uh, that one hurt my arms. That first run that fish did, hands down. Uh, not my biggest laker, uh, I was hoping it was, but it wasn't. Um, but I'll tell you what, I've never had a fish in my life double that size ever run that hard. That fish took it out. That uh, Props to that fish for being an athlete. Awesome. All right, guys, I'll tell you what, I had an absolutely epic day of fishing here for big lake trout, fishing structure, fishing with plastics. Uh, but I wanted to walk you through what we were doing. We talk about it in the studio all the time, but a lake trout, again, in the three scenarios we've been covering, um, you know, when they're on that, you gotta find that right thing. So again, when they're shallow chasing bait, you throw that top water, work the surface. You know, when they're in that, that situation of big flats, we troll from so we can cover water, but when they're on structure, we're fishing precisely. We're using the, the motor guide, the Lowrance. We're literally working everything in tune uh, and we're literally hunting fish. We drive around, find a fish, drop down to that fish, start covering water. Um, and if we're not in fish, we reel up and move. I think that's one of the biggest things that we did today that helped us that I think we do every day um, that a lot of people overlook. A lot of people, you know, the second they don't see a fish on their graph, you know, they fish 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes before they pick up or go look for them. As where us, if we go, you know, two minutes without seeing a fish on the graph, we're picking up speed, we're moving around. 
around. So we're constantly finding fish, chasing fish. Uh, and today we have a big point coming out in the water. So a big piece of structure underwater slowly gets deeper. Um, and normally these lake trout sit right on top. Today they're sitting anywhere between five and eight feet to the edge, um, making it somewhat challenging. So the top is real center, real nice and kind of uh, flat on top, but it's narrow. And then it tapers off to extremely deep water. We have a channel on one side dropping down to almost 100 feet of water. Uh, then we have deep water on the other side dropping to about 65. And we're fishing in that 25 to say 38-ish, maybe 40-ish. Uh, a couple of times we dropped down into 45. But either way, we're, we're fishing on the tops here and we're fishing just on the slopes. But using that electric motor, when it's steep, it's kind of harder because you, if that fish is in, again, you know, five feet off, and you know, if you're off by a couple of feet, you're dramatically off. So we got to keep the bait right in the zone. Uh, so either way, we're cruising around that electric motor and just keeping our baits on the spot. And we're hopping the baits fairly aggressive. We're hopping them, say, six inches to a foot, snapping it, walking back down, snapping it, walking back down, having tension the entire time. And I'll tell you, I missed a ton of fish today. I missed, you know, 70% of the bites, but it's just lake trout and it's hard. Um, the one thing that we do that helps us dramatically make the hook sets that we do uh, is we're using fairly specialized gear. So we're taking a walleye rod. We're taking a six foot, three inch walleye rod, uh, just like this. So a nice high end walleye rod, uh, spinning rod. That's what I personally use. I'm just have a little bit of wrist action. I'm using a spinning rod versus using a casting rod. So we take this six, three action rod and we take this rod, we're going to grab the line um, and we're actually going to load this rod. So you see that load rate right there? This is an extra fast tip on this rod. So I bend that walleye rod and I count those guides. One, two, three, four, five. At the fifth guide is literally where the action starts. That's where the backbone is. So I take this rod and I literally take a Dremel and I cut it off halfway between that number four and five to where I literally take away the overall action of that rod and I end up with old Stumpy right here. Right here, load that rod, see that? There's no action on it. I literally make a broomstick. The concept here is a stiffer rod to where the rod doesn't have to load. So many times with this lighter rod, if you lift up a half ounce jig, three quarter ounce jig, one ounce jig, by the time you lift the rod, it actually takes a second for that rod to load. Then you lift the jig up and the rod unloads, basically causing that jig to spring, giving you more action than you want. It also softens up that, that stroke. So if you're in 25, 30 feet of water or you're 100 feet of water, it's hard to get a crisp action because that rod's loading and unloading, making for a very mellow presentation. When you take the action out of the rod, it causes for a very fast, frequent action. It's just crisp, and that crispness is literally what drives these big lake trout crazy. The other big factor, when they hit it, um, I mean, we absolutely straight to backbone. So number one, the enjoyment factor is through the roof. If you've never done serious battle with a big lake trout uh, with a stiff rod, there's something else about it. A lot of people think that a light action rod gives you more action, but the rod actually absorbs most of that fight. You feel weight, but the rod's taking away a lot of that play. When you go straight to the, the broomstick, it is all power delivered to you, the angler. So number one, us, the angler, we feel all that power. Two, it allows us to land these fish in a, in a good time to where you can release that fish and we get 100% survival on that release. It doesn't take us an hour to fight these fish in. Uh, you know, that big fish there took me, what, 10 minutes? I don't know how long it took, but it took a while. Uh, but had I been using a lighter action rod, probably would have taken me three or four times that amount of time and a lot of times led to, uh, to you know, to, to failure to release on some of those big fish. So that's the concept today. Number one, fine tune the structure. If those fish are on structure, if they're hunting on structure, much like a walleye would, find that structure, break it down. Make sure you stay on the fish. The second they're off your graph, find them, chase them down and get your baits in front of them. The other big concept here is having the right gear for the, for the technique. Uh, again, stiff action, heavy action rods. Um, you want everything delivered straight to that fish, make the most of that hook set and land those fish every day, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this jigging segment. Uh, I know I did. I am sore, I'm worn out. The fish beat me up. I gotta take a shower. Uh, but guys, I had a ball. I hope you enjoyed watching.